couple of things in the second half, a couple of passes for one of their tries and a penalty against you for ball strip before another one that made a big difference in the end? I think it did, uh, particularly obviously the possession of the game. Um, you know, I was proud of our players, how they had to defend. You know, unfortunately, we probably created a little bit of that with uh, the pressure we put on ourselves through penalties and errors, but the boys had to continually defend. Um, and when you're coming down to those sorts of games, and particularly those two moments of the game, what you just spoke about, where the strip on fifth tackle was an unusual one. I don't think any player would probably want to strip the ball on fifth tackle down close to the line. And then, uh, as you saw on the screen there, the, the full pass. So two moments like that, particularly in such a close game, you know, it does hurt teams. Um, unfortunately, got us tonight. Do you think both passes were forward, or one of them was flat and the other was forward? Was there, a copy oh, there was definitely one there that looked forward. So, <laughs> again, you know, those moments in games, big games like this, when you're playing against teams like the Broncos, you know, they, every moment counts, and that was one that uh, unfortunately got away on us. So, interesting uh, decision that one. I'm surprised they finished strongly, Michael. You must have felt like you were in the game at that 60 minute point, you probably could have got them. Oh yeah, credit to the Broncos. You know, they just kept us down our, our end and we had to, we were camped on our try line for long periods of time. Again, you know, unfortunately we probably created a little bit of that through a few penalties and various errors, but you know, uh, you know, we'll we'll learn a lot from that tonight. You know, we've got to learn how to handle those moments throughout games to make sure that we uh, you know, step forward in the competition and um, you know, and just unfortunate, you know, that we couldn't get ourselves out of that. How much more um, significance is it top four clash and then you're playing against a team that's sort of you know, only one no, not at all. I, you know, the, at half time, you know, we're in good control. You know, after obviously the start of the game, um, we had a couple of errors there, and we we fought our way back in, and we're in front. Um, you know, and that obviously takes juice out of you when you have to defend your line for long periods of time. And I guess that might have been a telling factor at the back end of the game. But you know. I, our boys fought really, really hard for each other tonight. You know, and uh, obviously moments in those games when they're tight like that, you know, uh, you've got to hopefully get a few calls going your way. But um, anyway, that's, uh, we need to work from what we did tonight. Roger Cocker, do you look back on um, those things as reasons you lost, or do you look back on things that did yourselves and could have done better? Or what do you think? Yeah, I think what Magic said, we, we just gave them the ball too many times. They, uh, I think in the second half there, they had 60 odd shots in our 20 metre zone where we had. I know it was a low figure, yeah, 13 or yeah, yeah. nowhere, nowhere near enough. So, you know, they just built pressure. They got the ball down our end and, you know, their defence was really good. Their kick, kick chase was outstanding and they just pinned us down in that corner. And, you know, I, th I think that's where they won the game. How was the fatigue out there, Michael? How, how bad did it get? I mean, how did, how did you get yeah, I think for both teams, Margie, they were both both very tight. You know, at times there I thought the Broncos were gone, but, you know, they, they had their bench players come on and do a, do a really good job for them. And, um, you know, it, it was ugly at times from both sides. It ended up being one out runs, but, you know, I think they just ran a little bit harder and, and like I said, build pressure by kicking down and, and pinning us in the corner. Michael, judging by um, uh, the Herald today, um, GI's no certainty to be full back for Queensland. Have you got any thoughts on that? Does that surprise you? Or well, if, he, if he wants to defend like he did in that first half for uh, Queensland, I'm sure he'd do a fair job. He came up with a couple of try savers there and uh, he wiped him out a couple of times too. But you know, wherever they pick Greggy, I'm sure he's going to do a great job. He's in great form. What do you think, Michael, about, about that? Uh, well, you know, I think uh, Dane Nelson has done a good job for Queensland in the past, so you know, he knows their, their systems and structures in defence and you know, having Greggy at the back there. But you know, the thing about Queensland at the moment is uh, you know, four, you know, four of the yeah. best fullbacks in the game probably playing uh, all, all playing really good football so there's, there's a heap of options there which isn't a bad problem for the selectors to have. You know Billy fairly well though. Have you spoken to him? Yeah mate, I, I, I'm, he's always positive but you know, I'm, I'm not, not too sure how he's, I haven't, I haven't spoken in the last couple of days. I know he'd love to be back there but it's just a matter of uh, getting his recovery right, rehab right and you know, if, he, if he can um, put some weight on it in the next couple of days and get some running into it, he said he, said he might be right but Wait and see. I don't think he'll go in the game under Dunn. I guess the fullback, he's really imposing himself, Greg Michael. Greg, Greg Nils, I guess the more time he gets his hands on the ball, he's pretty imposing. Oh, definitely. That's the things that he's been doing for us. I mean, the more times he gets his hands on, as you said, he's definitely a, a weapon out the back there for us. And, uh, you know, he can float from both sides of the park. So, you know, you've got Greg being able to come up all over the park. It's pretty dangerous. Well, Big Doug Taylor looks like he's blowing fairly heavily late in the first half as the trainer sort of your aim to, to, to get in position to playing a strong 80 minutes? Do you want to push him 
I thought it was just the part of the game tonight. You know, at the end of the day, we had to do a lot of defending in that first 20 minutes, and unfortunately, in the second half, we had to do the same. And you know, there are a lot of players, as Michael spoke about, out there tired. So Dave wasn't alone. Um, you know, you've got to push players through at times, and Dave did that at times throughout the game for us. He came in under the, under the microscope, didn't he? Oh, he, oh, he did a good job for us. You know, uh, obviously, he'd probably be a bit disappointed with one or two carries, but at the end of the day, Dave can carry the ball very strong. You know, and he's a great player for us. So, you know, uh, he's going to keep continually working at his game, and I'm sure he's going to play some great stuff for us. And you know, I hope that he gets in there on Wednesday.